Hello to everyone. Today we are going to discuss antepartum hemorrhage. What is antepartum hemorrhage? It is defined as bleeding from an or into the genital tract after the 28th week of the pregnancy but before birth of the baby. The first and second stage of labor are thus included in this time period. So what are the causes of the antepartum hemorrhage? Can be divided into placental bleeding which occurs in the 70% of cases. 25% cases are unexplained or indeterminate and 5% Placental bleeding can be of the placenta previa or abruptio placenti. So first is the placenta previa. When the are completely over the lower uterine section and adjust as the placenta previa. The term previa uh, is in Latin it denotes the position of the placenta in relation to the presenting part. Incidence About one third cases of antepartum hemorrhage belongs to the placenta previa. Incidence is 0.5% to 1% among hospital deliveries and in 80% cases it is found in multiparous women. The etiology the following theories are postulated dropping down theory the fertilized ovum drops down and is implanted in the lower uterine segment due to poor decidual reaction in the upper uterine segment failure of the zona pellucida to disappear in time leading to formulation of the central placenta previa second is the persistence of the chorionic activity in the decidua capsularis and its subsequent development into capsular placenta which comes in contact with decidua vera of the lower uterine segment explains the formation of the lesser degrees of the placenta previa third is the defective decidua results in the spreading of the chorionic villi over a wide area in the uterine wall to get nourishment during this process not only the placenta becomes membranous but encroaches onto the lower segment. The risk factor, the high risk factor for placenta previa are multiparity, increased maternal age uh, that is more than 35 years of age, history of previous cesarean section or any other scar in the uterus such as in the myomectomy or hysterectomy, placental size, smoking can be a risk factor. It causes the placental hypertrophy to compensate carbon monoxide induced hypoxemia and prior curettage. So, um, prior history of any curettage can be a risk factor. Uh, in this image, we are looking the four types of the placenta previa type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4. These are the four types which uh, is categorized on the basis of the position of the placenta in. The lower uterine segment types of the degrees there are four types of the placenta previa depending upon the degree of the extension of placenta to the low, lower segment as we have looked in the last video picture the type one is low lying the major part of the placenta is attached to the upper segment and only the lower margin encroaches onto the lower segment but not up to the os Type 2 is the marginal one. The placenta reaches the margin of the internal loss but does not cross over it. Third is type 3rd incomplete or partial center. The placenta covers the internal loss partially, covers the internal loss when closed but does not entirely do so when fully dilated. Means it comes partially central and incomplete closure in type 4 it is the central or total closure the placenta completely covers the internal os even after it is fully dilated now type 3rd and 4 constitute about one third of the cases for clinical purpose the types are graded into mild degree type 1 and type 2 anterior that is the in mild degree type 1 and the type 2 anterior one is combined and the major degree comprises the posterior one of the type 2 and third and fourth one.
dangerous placenta previa type 2 posterior placenta previa it is known as the dangerous placenta previa because the curved birth canal may about 2.5 cm overlies the sacral promontory, thereby diminishes the anterior posterior diameter and prevents the this hinders effective compression of the separated placenta to stop bleeding. Placenta is more likely to more chance of the cord compression or cord collapse. The last two may produce fetal anoxia or even death. The bleeding is down in later months and the lower segment progressively dilates. The inelastic placenta is sheared off the wall of the lower segment. This leads to the opening of the utero placental vessels and leads to an episode of the bleeding. As it is a physiological phenomenon which leads to the separation of the placenta, the bleeding is said to be inevitable. The mechanisms of the spontaneous control of bleeding are thrombosis of the open sinuses, mechanical pressure by the presenting part, and placental infarction. Clinical features The only symptom of the placenta previa is vaginal bleeding. The classical feature of bleeding in placenta previa are sudden onset, painless, apparently causeless, and recurrent. In about 5% cases, it occurs for the first time during labor, especially in priming gravida. In about one third of the cases, there is a history of warning hemorrhage which is usually slight. Signs General condition and anemia are proportionate to the visible blood loss, but in the tropics, the picture is often confusing due to the pre existing anemia. Abdominal examination The size of the uterus is proportionate to the period of gestation. Uterus feels relaxed, soft, and elastic without any localized area of tenderness. Persistence of the mole presentation like breach or transverse or unstable line is more frequent. There is also increased frequency of the teen pregnancy. The head is floating in contrast to the period of the gestation. Persistence of the fetal head is very suggestive. The head cannot be pushed down into the pelvis. Fetal heart sound is usually present unless there is major separation of the placenta with the patient in accentuated condition. Slowing of the fetal heart rate on pressing the head down into the pelvis which soon recovers promptly as the pressure is released is suggestive of the presence of the low-lying placenta, especially of the posterior type. This is also known as the Stahl-Worthy sign. In this, we, when we push the head down in the pelvis, which the fetal heart rate slows down and when we re release the pressure it recovers promptly this is the stell worthy sign but this sign is not always significant because it may be due to fetal head compression even in an otherwise normal cases is vulval inspection only inspection is to be done is to note whether the bleeding is still occurring or has ceased character of the blood bright red or dark colored and the amount of the blood loss to be assessed from the blood stained clothing in placenta previa the blood is bright red as the bleeding occurs from the separated utero placental sinuses close to the cervical opening and escapes out immediately confirmation of the diagnosis localization of the placenta by sonography Transabdominal ultrasound, transvaginal ultrasound, transperineal ultrasound, color Doppler flow study, and 3D power Doppler study can be done. For MRI, for better diagnosis, placenta previa and placenta previa accreta. And clinically confirmation by internal examination, double setup examination, direct visualization during cesarean section, examination of the placenta following vaginal delivery. Transabdominal sonography accuracy is uh, after 30 weeks of the gestation is about 98%. False result may be due to full bladder or myometrial contractions. Poor imaging could be due to maternal obesity and posteriorly situated placenta.
trans vaginal cloning of it is used for measuring the distance from the internal os to the placenta if the placenta is 2 cm or more from the os no follow up is necessary if the placenta is less than 2 cm from the follow up should be obtained at about 32 weeks if placenta covers the internal os the distance it projects beyond the os should be measured such patient need regular follow up transperineal sonography this is well accepted by patients internal os visualized in 97 to 100% of the cases color doppler diffuse vascular lacs with turbulent flow in the hypoechoic areas near the cervix is indicative of the placenta previa differential diagnosis Placenta previa is at time confused with other causes of the bleeding occurring in the late month of the pregnancy. The most common one which is, has to be differentiated is bleeding from the premature suppression of the normally saturated placenta that is the abrapsio placenta. The local cervical lesions such as polyp carcinoma can easily be differentiated by a speculum examination. However, both the conditions can coexist. So in circumvalectal placenta, the bleeding is slight and the diagnosis is only made after examining the placenta following delivery. So in this table, we can see the clinical features and abdominal examination, ultrasound and vaginal examination, the difference between the placenta previa and abruptio placenta. Nature of the bleeding in placenta previa is painless, apparently causeless and recurrent. Bleeding is always revealed. Blood is bright red colored, proportionate to the vision. Anemia is proportionate to the visual blood loss and no preeclampsia features, not relevant. But in abruptio, there is a painful at preeclampsia or trauma or continuous revealed or concealed can be bleeding. Blood is dark colored and anemia and general condition out of proportion to the visible blood loss in the concealed type and preeclampsia features can be in one third of the cases on abdominal examination height of uterus is proportionate to the gestational age feel of the uterus is soft and relaxed and malpresentation is common head is high floating and fetal heart sounds are usually present in the previa that is present a previa in abruptio condition the height is disproportionate in large so feel is tense tender and rigid malpresentation are unrelated and head may be engaged and fetal heart sound usually is absent especially in concealed type on ultrasound placenta is in lower segment on abruptio in ultrasound placenta is in upper segment on vaginal examination placenta is felt on the lower segment and in Abrapsio placenta is not felt on the lower segment. Blood clots should not be confused with the placenta. Thank you.